Let's talk some more about slope. You've seen several examples in class and for homework, but we're going to do a little more practice. Look at this example given on this page. It's a slope or a hill. Ask yourself, is this a positive slope or a negative slope? We can say that the slope is positive because as this tractor comes towards the hill, it's going to go in an upward direction, a positive direction. We also learned that slope is rise over run. So we ask ourselves, how much is the rise of the hill? That says it's 40. So the rise is 40. And the run, that's the distance across this way, is 100. Now that's a fraction that we can reduce. Each of those numbers can be divided by 20. 40 divided by 20 is 2. And 100 divided by 20 is 5. But what does that 2 over 5 actually mean? The 2 over 5 means that for every 5 feet this way, the tractor goes up 2. So that's the rate that he's moving up this hill. Let's go on and look at some other examples. This is very easy. We've already looked at the examples like this in class. We're going to use a slope triangle to find the slope of the line before. I'm going to set myself up first by writing rise over run. If you recall, the first step is to identify two, step, two points on the line. I'm going to choose this point and this point. First rise. I start with the point on the left, which is this point here. How much do I rise? I rise up 1. I can put a 1 there. Now I need to move to the point on the right. I will run 1, 2, 3, 3. So the rise is 1, the run is 3, so my slope of this line is 1 third. Let's try a different one. First, we identify two points on the line. I have to find where the grid lines cross. I'm going to go ahead and use this point and this point. Again, I'll set myself up as rise over run. The first job, I first go to the point on the left. Hmm, to get to the point on the right, I'm not actually going to rise, I'm going to drop. That would be negative 4. Oops, excuse me. 1, 2, 3. That would be negative 3. Put that for my rise. And my run, 1, 2. Some people want to say that that's negative 2, but I'm actually moving in the positive direction towards the positive numbers. So that is a positive 2. My slope then would be negative 3 over 2. What that means is that if I want to continue this line, I just follow that slope pattern. Drop 3, run 2. Drop 3, run 2. And I could continue with that rate, changing the line at that rate, and I could continue that line for as long as I want. Let's move on. Another way to find slope is to use two points. This time we're going to use the numbers at the point. And we're not going to actually count squares. We are going to find the distance or the difference between those two points. When we find difference, we subtract. So I'm going to start with the rise and the run. If I think back to my previous example, the rise part was dealing with the y values and the run part was dealing with the x values. To help, my, help me remember that, I'm going to put y's and x's. So to do this, we're going to actually subtract. Again, 
always start with the point on the left. So this would be 5, because we're starting with the y values, minus negative 7. We're finding the difference between the two points, so we use subtraction. So the y's go on the top. Now we go back to the x's. And again, I'm going to start with the number on the left, then the number on the right. So this would be negative 3 minus 3. Again, hopefully you still remember your rules for integers. Two negatives make a positive. 7 plus 5 is 12. Negative 3 take away 3. Get a lot of students that make mistakes on this. Here's negative 3 on the number line. If I were to take 3 more away from that, I will be way down here at negative 6. So my slope is 12 over negative 6. That can be simplified. 12 divided by 6 is 2. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. So the slope of that line would be negative 2. At this point, I'd like you to pause the movie, copy this example that I just did for you into your notes, and use those same steps to try to find the slope of the line that goes through these points here. When you're finished, come back and start the movie again, or start from here. Let's see how you did. Again, we're going to do the rise, which is the change in y values, over the run, which is the change in x. You should have started with the point on the left for the y value. Negative 3 minus 4. Negative 3 minus 4. We're finding the difference in the y values. Now we're going to find the difference in the x values. 5 minus 2. Always starting with the point on the left. Make sure those numbers are in front. Negative 3 take away 4 is negative 7. And 5 minus 2 is 3. Check your work to see if you got negative 7 thirds for your slope. If you didn't, pause the movie now and go back to find your mistake and fix it, fix it in your notes. I'd like you to try these problems for class. Number one, use a slope triangle to find the slope of that line. And then number two, find the slope of a line that goes through the points 5, 7, and 2, 3.